What is the maximum distance between tie downs to prevent cargo shifting? Tie down every 10 feet. What should you do when using a fire extinguisher to fight a fire? Aim at the base of the fire. When checking tires, what are some problems you should look for? Bad wear, cuts or other damage, tread separation, cracked valve stems. How can you know you have the engine speed and road speed to shift gears? You'll know by listening to the sound the engine makes. When you are backing your vehicle with the assistance of a helper, your helper should agree with you for the signal for stop and he should stand where you can see him at all times. Wheels or rims that have been repaired by welding are unsafe. What are some items to check, especially before driving in winter weather? The coolant level, the windshield washer level, the antifreeze level, antifreeze for your windshield washer fluid. Besides watching the traffic behind you, you can use your rear view mirrors to Watch for possible tire fires. What is a good policy for using your brakes when pulling off the road? Try to avoid using your brakes until your speed has dropped to about 20 miles per hour. Should you always be looking into the distance ahead? No, shift your tension back and forth, near and far. At night, in order to avoid the glare of oncoming traffic, what is a good direction to look? Look at the right side of the road and watch the sidelines. Why can't you assume your vehicle will clear the posted height at an overpass? because some roads might not be level and could cause your vehicle to tilt. How much time does it take to stop a heavy vehicle while going 55 miles per hour on a dry level road? About the length of a football field or about six seconds. You want to turn right and must swing wide. You should turn wide as you complete the turn. Some newer vehicles have progressive shifting, which means the RPMs at which you shift become higher as you move up in the gears. Rust around the lug nuts may indicate that the lug nuts are loose Hence, the wheel may be loose. If the vehicle in oncoming traffic is approaching you with its high beams on, you should keep your low beams on. Don't turn on your high beams and look at the right side of the road until the vehicle passes you. What should you consider about downshifting? before you reach a long downhill grade. Downshifting helps prevent the brakes from overheating and from losing braking power. Whether backing a straight truck or a combination vehicle, you should back and turn towards the driver's side. How often should you check your tires when driving in very hot weather. 
Check them every two hours or every 100 miles. Because of your vehicle's large size, you may wish to flash your brake lights to alert drivers behind you of hazards that you see ahead. What is the purpose of brake retarders? Retarders help slow the vehicle and reduce brake wear. When driving at night, what rule should you follow? Be ready to stop within the range of your headlights. Downshifting requires knowing when to shift. To do this correctly, you should use the tachometer or speedometer. In making a quick turn, what should you remember? Don't apply the brakes while turning. How do you reduce the odds of having to make a sudden move to avoid a hazard? Watch far enough ahead so you can anticipate a potential hazard. Roads usually become more slippery when ice begins to melt. What should you do before you drive if you are feeling drowsy? Get some sleep. To make a tight turn with a large vehicle, you may have to make the turn more slowly than many non-commercial drivers would expect. With a pressurized cooling system, you should not Remove the radiator cap until the cooling system has cooled. What is a danger when traveling alongside other vehicles? You may be trapped in your lane when you need to change lanes. How far ahead should you look while driving? You should look 12 to 15 seconds ahead of you while driving. If you are turning left, what lane should you use of two left turn lanes? Use the right hand lane. What can happen if you do not have enough weight on the steering axle? This can make the vehicle harder to steer. While making a turn, you should look in your mirrors to make sure that the rear of your trailer will not hit anything. As a commercial driver, with respect to your cargo, what are you responsible for? You're responsible for inspecting your cargo and knowing that it is securely tied down or covered. If the cargo contains any hazardous materials, you must check to see that placards are required. What is a problem you can have when using your mirrors? 
There are blind spots that your mirrors cannot show you. What is the minimum amount of tread depth that your tires should have? 4 30 seconds of an inch on the front wheel tires and 2 30 seconds of an inch on all other wheel tires. A pre-trip inspection should be performed before each trip. When going downhill in a vehicle with an automatic transmission, you should select a low range to get greater engine braking. What are some things to do if you are being tailgated? Avoid quick changes of speed or direction. To be sure that you know what is happening on the highway ahead of you, don't focus on the mirrors too long. Exhaust system parts should not rub against fuel system parts, tires, or other moving parts of the vehicle. How do you test hydraulic brakes for their stopping action? Go about 5 miles per hour and then push the brake pedal firmly. A good rule for using turn signals is if you don't have self-canceling turn signal indicators Remember to turn off the turn signal indicator after you have completed your turn. When traction is poor, such as in rain or snow, how should you speed up? Very gradually. Where do you place the three reflector triangles on a divided highway? Place them all to the rear, within 10 feet, 100 feet, and 200 feet. How often should cargo inspections be made? After every break during driving. When driving over 40 miles per hour, how much space should you try to keep in front of your vehicle at least one second for 10 feet of your vehicle plus one second what is a vehicle condition report a list of problems found by you what are two of three good rules for using turn signal indicators signal early and signal continuously before starting down a hill you want to make sure that you are in the proper gear you downshift before starting down the hill how does tire pressure affect hydroplaning Hydroplaning is more likely to occur when tire pressure is low. When should you help out other drivers by signaling that it is safe for them to pass? Never signal to let others know it is safe to pass. What is probably your best driving speed? Traffic is moving at 35 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone. 35 miles per hour is probably your best driving speed. Turned on brake retarders apply their power whenever you let up all the way on the accelerator pedal. What is the minimum number of tie downs that you should have? You should have at least two tie downs.
Should you turn your retarders off when the road is wet or snow covered? Yes, the retarders could cause your vehicle to skid. Slight melting will make ice wet. What is more slippery? Wet ice is more slippery. At dawn or dusk, or in rain or snow, when it is difficult for other drivers to see you, you might turn on your low beam headlights. Since air pressure increases with temperature increases, you should leave the warm tires alone since the air pressure will decrease when the tires cool off. Speed limits that are posted at freeway off-ramps may not be safe speeds for larger vehicles or heavily loaded vehicles. How do you test hydraulic brakes for a leak with a vehicle stopped? Pump the brake pedal three times, then apply firm pressure, then hold for five seconds. When merging with other traffic, you should use your mirrors to make sure the gap in the traffic is large enough for you to enter. What are some steering system defects to look for? Missing nuts, bolts, cotter keys, or other parts. The amount of space you need to cross or enter traffic is affected by the weight of your load. How many times more distance does it take to stop when your speed is doubled? Four times. What are two factors in knowing when to shift? Those factors are using the engine speed and road speed. If you have to stop your vehicle in the road to load cargo or passengers, you should flash your brake lights to warn drivers behind you. Why do empty trucks usually require greater stopping distances? Empty trucks can bounce and lock up their wheels. What is the only way to stop a front wheel skid? Let the vehicle slow down, stop turning, and stop braking so hard. What is important about the center of gravity of a load? A high center of gravity means you are more likely to tip the vehicle over. Are you required to show your logbook to an officer when asked? Yes. Before putting tire chains on your vehicle, you check to be sure that the chains have no broken hooks or cross links or bent or broken side chains. If you think that a tire has blown out, what should you do in stopping your vehicle? Hold steering wheel firmly and don't touch the brakes until the vehicle has slowed. What is black ice? Black ice is a thin layer of ice so clear you can see the road beneath it. As soon as you see your trailer getting off the proper backing path, you should turn the top of the steering wheel in the direction of the drift. What should you do if your vehicle hydroplanes? Release the accelerator and push in the clutch. To keep your vehicle from rolling back when you start up, you should partly engage the clutch before you take your right foot off of the brake. 
What is a good reason for knowing what the traffic is doing on all sides? You need to have room to change lanes or stop. What is controlled braking? It's applying the brakes as hard as you can without locking the wheels. Whenever you are about to pass a vehicle, pedestrian, or cyclist, you should assume that they have not seen you. Convex mirrors show a wider area than flat mirrors, but they also make things seem farther away than they really are. What's going on, Mother Truckers? Welcome to the Asian Mind Show. So, Mother Truckers out there, reach out to me for three reasons. First reason is to contact me and talk to me, maybe ask me a personal question. Second reason is they want job opportunities. And third reason is they want help building their resume. So I have a solution for you guys. Welcome to the Asian Mai Show. Walk me around, man. Let me know what's going on here. Okay. We have, we have the glass right now. Have... Is it invisible glass? Because I don't see it. Man. <laughs> see, I made money today. What are three factors of total stopping distance with hydraulic brakes? Perception, reaction, and braking distance. When backing a trailer, you may make corrections to reposition your vehicle by pull-ups. Empty buses may not require more stopping distance than loaded buses because they usually have as much braking power when empty as when loaded. Where do you place the three reflector triangles on a two-lane road? Within 10 feet of the rear, 100 feet of the rear, and 100 feet from the front of the vehicle. When should you use your high beam headlights? Whenever you can, providing the law allows it. In holding a steering wheel, what is the proper way to place your hands? Firmly, with your hands on opposite sides of the steering wheel. If you have to set out warning reflective triangles by the highway, you should hold them between yourself and oncoming traffic. What are some things to do when you are backing your vehicle? Look at your path, back slowly, and back straight back. What are some defects to look for in the suspension system? Spring hangers that are cracked or broken. When should you downshift for a curve? You should downshift before entering the curve. Besides looking for vehicles coming into your lane, Looking for traffic means it means watching for the brake lights of slowing vehicles ahead of you. 
What is the purpose of cargo blocking and bracing? That would be to keep the cargo from sliding and falling and getting out of balance. When you need to slow down, you may want to warn drivers behind you by tapping lightly on the brake pedal to flash the brake lights.